Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So this is another chapter which is the last chapter of our subject. Right? So we can see here that we have advanced materials in construction. So these are other materials okay, or uh, a more advanced materials that is used in the uh, civil engineering uh, construction. Okay. So for the learning outcomes, okay, at the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the innovation of new construction materials and also their application for sustainable development. Okay, so first we look into fiber reinforced plastic, okay, or also known as FRP. Okay, so the fiber reinforced plastic or FRP uh, is, it is also known as fiber reinforced polymer. It is a composite material okay, that is made of a polymer matrix uh, reinforced with fibers. Okay, so FRPs are commonly used in aerospace, automotive, marine and also construction industries. Mm -hmm. right, so we can see one example here okay, which is the cross section of CF, uh, CRP okay, or GRP rod okay, which is the carbon or glass fiber okay, and also uh, it is combined or binded with the resin matrix. Okay, so FRP has become established as a material of major importance in an ever-increasing number of applications due to these general advantages, right? So it is lightweight, it has high strength, uh, it has extreme durability, okay, uh, stability under UV exposure and also chemical resistance. Okay, so these fiber reinforced composites can be molded into an infinite number of forms and surface finishes okay, because it is of a, a plastic material okay, or polymer material. So therefore, it can actually be shaped into any uh, desired shape. Okay, so uh, it is capable of meeting stringent design standards when, while at the same time providing major cost benefits. So fiber reinforced composites typically contain one or more reinforcing fiber materials embedded inside the plastic resin, right? So this plastic resin acts as the binder, right? So in concrete, okay, the binder is cement, right? So as for this fiber reinforced composites, okay, it is uh, binded by the plastic resins. Okay, so in many applications, the core materials are used to increase the section modulus. Okay, so fiber reinforcements contribute, the bulk, contribute to the bulk of strength and also stiffness to a composite. Right, so we can see here, so these are the uh, strain versus uh, tensile stress okay, for the fiber reinforced composites. Right, so we can see that we have fibers okay, inside the uh, uh, material, okay, and also we have the resin as the binder. Right, so therefore, in combination of these two materials, okay, so we can uh, develop a material okay, which is of a sufficient tensile stress, okay, and it is known as the FRP composite. Okay, so these are the characteristics and limitation of therm the thermal setting resins. Okay, so uh, if we are using the resin type of polyester, okay, so the characteristics are white, it is a wide choice of resins. Okay, it is, uh, it can be cured at room temperature. It has very good mechanical properties. Okay, uh, good chemical resistance and also good electrical properties. However, Okay, it will undergo some shrinkage uh, during curing, right? So this is for uh, the first resin type, okay, which is polyester. Then we have the second one, which is vinyl ester, right? So as for this one, as for the characteristics, it is excellent. It has excellent mechanical properties, right? So it has excellent uh, chemical resistance, good fatigue resistance, good toughness, low water absorption, okay, how uh, and also low. low low water absorption however okay the limitations are okay it is of a, a quite a high cost okay and it also undergoes some shrinkage during curing right okay then the next one is epoxy okay where whereas it also has excellent mechanical properties it has very good chemical resistance good thermal properties good electrical uh, properties and also low shrinkage in curing Right, so in comparison to the uh, two resin types that we have discussed just now, polyester and also vinyl ester, mm -hmm. right? So as for this, if epoxy, it has a 
low shrinkage okay right so however as for the limitations okay it is also consists of a high cost okay long cure cycles okay and also it has limited cosmetic properties right okay so these are the characteristics and also limitations of the thermosetting resins okay Alright, so uh, the mechanical of FRP laminates okay, compared to other structural materials, right? So we have uh, this uh, comparison okay, that is made to the FRP, right? So comparison is made to aluminium, concrete, mild steel and also stainless steel, right? Okay, so as for the compressive strength, okay, actually when we are using the FRP, okay, we are going to have a compressive strength of uh, a higher value okay which is up to 130 to 520 uh, newton per millimeter square right okay and also for the tensile strength okay so the tensile strength is also higher okay whereas it can go up to uh, 900 uh, mpa okay right so uh, the modulus of elasticity also okay is quite high okay however Okay, it is lesser in comparison to the uh, steel material okay, because it is less ductile. Usually when we talk about FRP, okay, it is uh, very good under compression. Okay, however, it is quite brittle. Right? Okay, so then next we move on to the types of fiber reinforced plastic. Right, so we have types of FRP. Uh, so the types of fibers are glass fibers, carbon fibers, or aramid fibers. Okay, then as for the type of polymers, okay, so we have uh, epoxy, okay, we have vinyl ester, okay, or we have polyester thermosetting plastics, right? So this is for the resins. Okay, alright, so first now we look into the glass fiber, right? So glass fiber is the most widely used reinforcement is in FRP uh, composites industry. Okay, so in this industry, it is of, uh, in the industry, it is often referred to as glass reinforced plastic or GF, uh, GRP or GFRP. Okay, so glass reinforced plastic is lightweight and it has good thermal insulation properties. It has high strength to weight ratio, making it useful for the production of products such as water tanks, surfboards, uh, canoes, uh, small boat hulls, okay, and also similar products, right? So you can see here we have examples okay, of uh, the application okay, of the glass fibers. Okay, so we have uh, the uh, use of glass fibers okay, for the uh, aesthetic purposes okay, for uh, pavilions okay, and also we have uh, the glass fiber sheet okay, and also we have the glass fiber roving strands right so sometimes this glass fiber is also included inside the concrete okay, to increase the mechanical uh, properties of concrete Okay, so these are the common glass fiber forms, right? So we have a uh, chop strand mat, KCSM. Okay, it is applied in roll form and this, uh, this is a mat of randomly chopped strands held together by a light binder and it provides a uniform strength, uh, strength in all directions. Okay, then we have another one which is woven uh, roving. Okay, it is used in conjunction with chop strand mat Okay, to provide bulk and directional strength to FRP laminates. Okay, so glass fibers are arranged at right angles to each other or in other positions so that their orientation provides balanced strength. Right, so it is also known as WR. Okay, then the next one is continuous filament mat, okay, which is as also known as CFM. Okay, so the properties is almost similar to CSM. Okay, then the next one is woven glass cloth. Okay, it is produced by conventional textile weaving methods in virtually any variation. Okay, where thinner cloths make thinner cloth okay, make laminates of very high tensile strength and modulus. Okay, and the last one is glass flakes. Okay, it is used in resin-based coatings okay, to reduce the permeability of moisture, vapors, and also uh, solvents. Right. Okay, so there are um various uh functions okay of this glass fibers right so uh as uh, we uh, use it okay in uh, a particular function okay so therefore okay the uh, forms of this glass fibers will also change right so we can use the mat okay or we can use fibers we can use glass flakes okay and so on 
Okay, so the next one is carbon fiber, right? So carbon fiber reinforced polymer or carbon fiber reinforced plastic, also known as CFRP. Okay, is a very strong and light uh, fiber reinforced polymer which contains carbon fibers. So this polymer is most often epoxy, but other polymers uh, such as polyester, vinyl ester or nylon are sometimes used. Okay, so the uh, composite okay, may contain other fibers okay, such as Kevlar, uh, aluminium, glass fibers as well as carbon fiber. Okay, right. So that is for carbon fibers. Okay, so as for this carbon fibers, sometimes we are using this for the strengthening of uh, structures. Okay, so it can be used as a CFRP bars. Okay, or it can also use as CFRP fabric. Right. So we can use this uh, usually for the rehabilitation of the existing structures. Okay, so the next one is aramid fiber. So aramid fibers are most uh, commonly used as uh, known as Kev Kevlar, okay, Nomex or Technora. Okay, so Kevlar is the trade name uh, registered by Dupont uh, Co. Okay, of aramide, uh, polyparaffinylene terephthalamide, okay, fibers, and Kevlar fibers were originally. Uh, developed as a replacement of steel in automotive tires. Okay, so uh, as for this type of fibers, okay, it has these following properties. Okay, whereas it is high in tensile, okay, five times stronger per weight uh, unit than steel. Okay, then it has a higher uh, modulus of elasticity. Okay, very low, very low elongation up to a breaking point. Okay, low weight. A low in weight, high chemical inertness, okay, very low coefficient of thermal expansion, high fracture toughness, okay, uh, so uh, it can uh, take a bunch of uh, impact resistance, okay, then uh, we have high cut resistance, textile processability, and also flame resistance, okay, so this is for the aramide, uh, aramide fiber. Okay, so next we move on to the application of FRP, right? So it can be used for reinforcement bars for concrete as the pre-stressing tendon for concrete members, okay? And also we can use FRP sheet or fabrics, okay? That can be used to increase the flexural strength in weakened or under-designed members, right? So as what I've mentioned to you just now, right? Okay, so this, uh, when this uh, material, okay, or FRP material, it can be used for the rehabilitation of the existing structures. Okay, so the advantages of this FRP material, okay, is that it will not corrode in field conditions, okay, because it is not steel, okay, but it is made out of uh, other material. Okay, then we have, uh, it is lightweight, okay, it is strong in tension, okay, and the method of construction, okay, if we are using the FRP bar, okay, is the same as for the steel reinforcement. However, okay, we have a few disadvantages okay, or drawbacks of these materials okay, whereas it has low modular of elasticity okay, so it is quite brittle. So it cannot be shaped in the field, okay, it is more expensive than steel and also the coefficients of thermal expansion are different than those of steel or concrete. Right? Okay, so since we are using a different material, okay, therefore we are going to have uh, certain limitations okay, of this material okay right so that is for the uh, fiber uh, reinforced uh, polymer right so next one we move on to the fiber reinforced concrete right so fiber reinforced concrete is a concrete that is containing fibrous material okay which increases its structural integrity so it contains short discrete fibers that are uniformly distributed and randomly oriented. Okay, so these fibers okay, includes steel fibers, glass fibers, synthetic fibers, or natural fibers. Okay, so we can use different types of fibers okay, which can be embedded inside the concrete mix. Okay, so with these different fibers that char uh, that character of fiber reinforced concrete changes with varying concretes, fiber materials, geometries, distribution, orientation, and also density. Right? Okay, so we can embed this inside the concrete mix okay, and we can use uh, various types of 
fibers all right so we can either use steel okay we can use glass we can use thin synthetic or natural fibers okay all right so the effect of fibers in concrete okay usually it is used to control cracking right so it can be used to control cracking due to both plastic shrinkage and also drying shrinkage okay since it is of micro fibers okay it is very small okay and it is distributed throughout the mix right so therefore it can be uh, as a binder okay to hold together the aggregates matrix inside the concrete okay then it can also reduce the permeability of concrete okay reduce the bleeding of water okay and also uh, some types of some types of uh, fibers produces greater impact abrasion and also shatter resistance in concrete okay because it is of uh, microfibers okay so it can um, offer okay a better uh, impact resistance to the concrete material okay so generally fibers do not increase the flexural strength of concrete and cannot replace the moment resisting or structural steel reinforcement however some fibers will actually reduce the strength of concrete right so uh, when we are applying this uh, fibers okay, inside the concrete okay we have to pay attention on the orientation okay especially since if we have a wrong orientation okay or uh, a, a bad distribution of these fibers in the concrete so instead of increasing the mechanical properties of the concrete it could actually decrease the properties Okay, so uh, we can also use uh, one of uh, the fibers that we can use in the concrete is the glass fiber. So fiberglass is a man-made mineral fiber that is widely used in America. So the similarity in shape between the fiberglass and the asbestos fibers. Okay, fiberglass was able to effectively replace asbestos in many applications. Okay, such as electrical, thermal and acoustic insulation and in adding a structural reinforcement and heat resistance to a material. So fiberglass is a material that is made from extremely fine fibers of glass and it is used as a reinforcing agent for many polymer products. The resulting uh, composite material properly known as fiber reinforced polymer or glass reinforced plastic. Right, so these types are continuous fibers used in electrical uh, insulation, okay, in cement or plastic reinforcement, uh, is uh, insulation wool, okay, for thermal and acoustic insulation, right. So this is for the protection of sound and also the uh, protection of uh, um, temperature, right. So it can be of high temperature or very low temperature. Okay, and also we have special purpose fibers okay, which is used for heat resistance and also lightweight material. Okay, so these are the advantages and also disadvantages of glass fibers. Right? So it has very, tensile, very high tensile strength, excellent resistance to sunlight and UV. Okay, then, uh, however, it is very brittle. Okay, it is cheaper. It does not burn. Okay, it has good dimensional stability. Okay, it is uh, it has high resistance to mildew, okay, rotting and insects, and it also it has zero um, uh, moisture absorbance. Okay, right. So as for this type of material, okay, it will not corrode. Okay, so and as for the disadvantages, okay, it has adhesion difficulties. Right, so if it is included inside the concrete, right, so sometimes it has this. Uh, problem in view of the adhesion okay then we also have rel it is relatively heavy okay and glass fibers if breathed into the lungs can promote fatal cancerous growth right so it is very dangerous right if we are dealing with the uh, very fine glass fibers okay so it is brittle okay and has a poor flexing properties Okay, so that is for glass fibers. So next, we move on to the steel fibers. So steel fiber is a kind of newly developed reinforcement for concrete widely adopted globally nowadays. So compared to those uh, using common concrete, the projects using steel fibers are increased evidently in anti-stretching, anti-pressing, anti-abrasion, anti-cracking and anti-bending. And in long duration, okay, according to physical measuring. So in a steel fiber, 
In a steel fiber, the fiber spread the strain across the crack created in the matrix. Okay, in other terms, okay, the fibers are only useful if there are potential cracks in the material. Okay, so steel fiber concrete has already been used for and wide on uh, to many fields, okay, such as road bridges, airport runway, tunnel cover, and so on. Right, so this the principle of is essential as long as the anchoring of the fiber in the concrete is assured. Okay, right. So we can see here these are the functions of the steel fibers. Okay, some of the functions. So we can see that we have a crack prevention. Okay, where the steel fiber a bridge across the stress and prevent the crack from propagate propagating. Okay, so it minimizes and evens the uh, to eliminate the shrinkage crack, giving a giving a better control of surface quality. Right. Okay, so we can see here that uh, this FRC okay, or these fibers okay, will function as the crack control. Okay, so uh, we can see that we have fibers uh, prevents a shrinkage cracks. Okay, then we have another one is it is to provide ductility. So steel fibers are distributed throughout the concrete to prevent the delamination of concrete surfaces and edges. Right. Okay. So uh, here we can see that when we have uh, the steel fibers, okay, are distributed uh, in the concrete mix. Okay. So therefore, it can actually provide. Um, it can actually prevent okay from any delamination of the concrete. Okay, especially at the edges. Okay, then it can also promote uh, tensile stress. So tensile force is transferred to the steel fiber across the crack. So the fiber provides additional encourage to improve the tensile load bearing capacity of the concrete. Right. Okay. So with the uh, steel fibers inside, right. So it can actually hold okay the aggregates and also the uh, cement matrix together. Right. So this can this can actually increase the tensile strength of concrete. Okay, then it also uh, contributes to the energy absorption. Okay, whereas the steel fibers are reinforcing in all direction and distribute load more evenly. Right, so the steel fiber reinforcing concrete has relatively much higher load bearing capacity due to its ability in absorbing large amount of energy before failure. Right, so instead of having a sudden failure, okay, usually the failure for a fiber reinforced concrete structure will be, uh, uh, will be uh, much slower. Okay, as uh, the steel fibers okay, can help to distribute the uh, loadings okay, throughout the structure. Okay, then advantages of steel fibers, okay, it has resistance to impact, blast and short loads in, uh, and also high fatigue. Okay, so shrinkage control of concrete, very high flexural shear and also tensile strength. Okay, it has resistance to splitting okay, and also spalling, erosion and abrasion. Okay, high thermal and temperature resistance and also resistance to seismic hazards. Okay, right. So we are done with the uh, steel fibers. Okay, so next one we move on to natural fiber. Right. So one natural fiber that we are going to introduce here is coconut fiber. So coconut fiber is extracted from the outer shell of a coconut. Okay. So the common name, uh, or the scientific name and plant a family of coconut fiber, is uh Cocos nucifera. Okay, or uh Arich Arichache, okay, so uh, respectively. So, uh, coconuts are the most widely grown nut in the world, okay, and contribute significantly to the economy of many tropical areas. So, the short, tough fibers can be woven or pressed together for a number of uses. So, unlike, unlike man made fibers, coconut is a renewable resource. Okay, so there are two types of coconut fibers, okay, brown fiber extracted from matured co coconuts and White fibers extracted from immature coconuts. Okay, so brown fibers are thick, okay, strong, and have high abrasion resistance. Okay, where white fibers are smoother and finer, but also weaker. Right. So these coconut fibers, okay, can also be used okay, in the uh, concrete material. So uh, coconut fibers are commercially uh, co are commercially available in three forms. Okay, so namely the bristle. 
okay, which are the long fibers, okay, the mattress, which is uh, relatively short, okay, and also we have the corticated, okay, which are mixed fibers. So in engineering, the brown fibers are mostly used, right? So we don't usually use the white fibers, okay? So brown fibers are mostly used, okay, where the core uh, provides a natural non-toxic replacement for asbestos in the production of cement fiber board right so it can be used for the uh, fiber board right so uh, as for the uh, asbestos actually it can provide uh, an environmental uh, hazard right okay so therefore it can be replaced by this coconut fibers so the fiber reinforced concrete is strong flexible and may be less expensive to produce than other reinforcement methods such as wire mesh or rebar okay Right, so we can see here this is an example okay, of the coconut fiber. Okay, whereas we are going to take the outer part <coughs> of our uh, coconut. Okay, so there are many general advantages of uh, coconut fibers. Okay, which uh, they are moth proof, resistance to fungi and also a rotting process. Okay, it could provide excellent insulation against temperature and sound. Okay, uh, it is not easily combustible. Okay, flame retardant, unaffected by moisture and dampness. Okay, uh, tough and durable, resilient, uh, springs back to shape even after a constant use. Okay, and also it is totally static free and it is easier to clean. Okay, right. So that is for the natural fiber. Right. So we have already discussed on the uh, glass fiber we have already discussed on the steel fibers okay, which we can embed inside the concrete okay and also we have discussed on the natural fiber okay so one example of natural fiber is the coconut fiber okay we can which can be used as a sealing material right so there are researches that also uh being done okay in um including this coconut fibers in Concrete. Okay. However, the uh, the results okay, or the mechanical properties okay, are not uh, really increased okay, with the uh, with the inclusion of this coconut fibers in concrete. Okay. However, it is very useful okay, in uh, as a sealing material. Okay. And as for the natural fiber, we can also use the rice husk. Okay. So rice husk is also another type of fibers. Okay. That can also be used in the uh, uh, civil engineering uh, application okay right so uh, uh, I think that is the end okay for this uh, last chapter okay which is the advantages uh, the uh, advanced uh, materials okay that is used in the civil engineering uh, material okay so with that thank you very much assalamualaikum